Kara, and this is episode four in our series called Essentials. We are so glad that you are joining us today. Now, hey, have you ever ended up in a situation where you just felt like you did not belong? Let me tell you about a time where I felt that way. It was a few years back and I played on a college soccer team. Now you hear that and you're probably like, whoa, she must be like pretty athletic. No. I love to run. I have done lots of like cross country and track and field and I even ran a full marathon a while back. But when it comes to like sports and team sports, I am probably not your person. A few weeks ago, I went and I was playing pickleball and the ball went up in the air and I went to swing at it. Totally missed. The ball comes down, hits me straight in the eye. I'm like leaning over, just trying to like cry out all the dirt in my eye. It was a gong show. So soccer, you're probably thinking, how did she end up on a college soccer team? That's a great question. I was wondering the same thing. Now, they reached this point, they did their tryouts, and they're like, we do not have enough players for our team to happen. We need more people. And someone thought, well, hey, Kara knows how to run. She does lots of long distance running. Let's see if she would join the team. So I did. But let me tell you, the whole time I played, I felt like such an outsider. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to wear. I didn't have the cleats. I didn't have the shin guards or whatever they're called. The whole time I played, I was so clueless. I would stand on the field and people would literally yell at me, go that way, go that way, pull back, push up. It felt like being a human puppet. And my whole goal was just to like chase people and make them feel a little bit of fear and afraid because I did not know what to do when I started to touch the ball. I like was so terrible at dribbling. So I just was like, well, the least I can do is try and throw them off. Now, the cool thing was this team, they were so kind. They completely welcomed me onto the team. They could have been so rude to me because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to do it well. I wasn't super useful. But instead, they actually like really cheered for me. Anytime I would get the ball, I could hear so many people on the bench yelling my name and cheering for me to go for it. This team really made me feel like I belonged and like I was part of something. Sports and teams are a really great picture for us and can teach us a lot about who God is and his heart for us. You see, like I said, this team, they welcomed me in. They brought me in, caught me up to speed. They taught me the ropes. They taught me how soccer really worked and had grace for me when I totally messed up. Did you know that like they switched sides at halftime? I had to like figure that out. I don't have to switch my brain. Okay, now I have to run the other way. Not so great at sports. But this team still treated me like I belonged and like I was one of them because for that season, I really was. And even though I never felt good enough, this team did not care. And the cool thing is God offers the same to us. He offers us adoption as his child. He offers us belonging. Now, I have a question for you. And it says, if we are adopted by God, what difference does that make for our lives? Now, I asked a few people this question. And here are some of the things that they said. Someone said, that means that God is my father. And that makes that a reality for me. Someone else said, well, if God is my father and I'm adopted as his kid, it adds a little bit of expectation to me. Now there's like certain rules and certain ways I need to behave because I am part of a family. And so that reflects on my family. And another person said, I know that I always belong somewhere. How beautiful is that? And I wanna ask this same question to you. So I want you to turn to the people around you and talk about it. If we are adopted by God, if you are adopted by God, what difference does that make for our lives? You see, God's really into this idea of family. And the Bible talk, talks lots about family, specifically the first half, the Old Testament, it says some things. Now, maybe you've seen before a long list of names in the Bible and maybe you've like skimmed over that and be, or been really confused why that's in there. But have you ever really thought about it? You see, the Bible, it traces family heritage. Now, the fascinating thing about it is that they don't just list like the really good people. It's not selective about who's listed in that Bible. Rather, they list the good people, the bad people, and then the really bad people. They include the people who've done good things and bad things and then really bad things. We see that God works through all different kinds of people and all different kinds of families. 
God also sees us as more than just a number or a list. He knows you by name. With family, we're fully known, just as we're fully known by God. Now, as we continue through the Bible in the New Testament, it shifts a little bit. It becomes less about tracking your family and things have started to change. Now, the gates are open and all are welcome to join into this family. You see, we are adopted into God's family. It's not about who you know or how you're related or your status. There's no rules on who can or cannot be in it. Anyone who chooses to believe is brought into this family. So here's what the Bible says about adoption. This comes from Romans 8, 14 to 15. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. Later in the text, the Bible uses this word heirs. Now with royalty, if a king or queen dies, then an heir takes on their throne. They inherit and receive all of the good things that they have, the royalty and the riches. As we become followers of Jesus, we inherit sonship to Christ. We are heirs and we are adopted as his child. Now, there's some perks. There's perks of being part of my family. Does anyone else carry a stack of random cards around in their wallet? I love like loyalty cards. And so in my wallet, I carry around, usually it's a really thick stack. I just chose a few today. I have like a library card from a city in, Winni like, in Winnipeg, a totally different city. I have my Starbucks gold card. There's a a Cobbs card for bread. I have different ones for bubble tea, two different ones for bubble tea, one for coffee, another one for ice cream. And then this one, this comes from a bubble tea store in Minneapolis. Now that is like on the other side of the continent. I don't live there. And, but I just like, I'm really hopeful because someday if I go back there, I want to get a few more punches on this loyalty card so that maybe someday if I buy like eight more bubble teas, I can then go back and like get something free. You know, we want to cash in on the good things, the perks, because I love free things. And now sometimes there's perks, right? About being part of these places, about belonging. And in my family too, sometimes there's like this occasional perk. And the perks, like they're not given to just anyone. They're given to the people who are part of the family, not the people who come to visit, not the people who know of us. It's like those who belong. Now, a few weeks ago, I went to get my hair cut and it just so happens that my dad actually sees the same hairdresser that I see. So like naturally we always get, you know, matching haircuts, right? <laughs> Not quite. But at the end of the haircut, I'd been there, we'd been talking about my dad and my family, all the different things going on. And I went to pay for my haircut and my hairdresser says to me, oh, don't worry about it. And I said, what are you talking about? She said, oh, your parents, they came by a couple weeks ago. They already paid for it. I was like, what? They paid for, for my haircut so I don't have to? Did they pay for a random person's haircut just for the sake of it, for fun? No, they paid for mine. But why, why do you think they did that? Because I am their child and because they actually care for me. My parents wanted to show me kindness. It was a perk of being their kid. And there are perks of belonging to somewhere, of being committed and staying. Now because God has adopted us, we get the perks of being his kid. Being adopted as his own is the highest privilege of the gospel. In John 1 verse 12, it says, but to all who receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Anyone who chooses to become a follower of Jesus becomes one of his children. There's no higher status in a family than belonging and being part of it. God adopting us is the greatest gift to us, his gift to us. This is the real reward of our salvation. And so as we experience this adoption, it starts to shape and change our identity. This is the most important part of us. It's, it's who we are to God, his kid. Now, here's the hopeful thing for you and I. Whether we have a really great family or an awful family, Jesus wants us in his family. We get to belong there. His love is the most perfect love. His family is the most perfect family. And so as we choose Jesus, he welcomes us into this family. This identity isn't something that can be taken away from us. It, it can't be changed or removed. You know, sometimes families can change a bit. People will move. Someday you might get married. People can even die. 
But no matter what changes we endure in our earthly family, our heavenly family remains. Our identity in God is something we can cling to as a constant. God's adoption is something that can never be taken from us. And so we are adopted. It's like you sign the papers and it's done. God saving us and adopting us is the redemption to the separation that happened at the very start in Genesis with Adam and Eve. This is the full circle. It's the final act of the narrative. And as we choose life with him, then we will never be the same. Hey, thanks for joining us in this series. We are so glad that you have been able to, to tune in and listen to some of the essentials of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Hey, if you have more questions about this, one of your leaders would love to talk with you about it. And we just encourage you to reach out, to ask the questions and to spend time thinking about what does it mean to be adopted by God? Thanks for joining us and we will see you later.